attorney Gilbert did not understand the legal deadline for filing a lawsuit against the truck driver and his employer. A personal injury lawsuit in Iowa must be filed within two years of the date of the injury. If the lawsuit is filed against an out-of-state defendant, like the trucking company who employed the driver who hit Ms. Clement, a lawsuit must be filed even earlier because it must be both filed and served on the defendant before the two-year deadline. How hiring the wrong lawyer wrecked a $2.7 million truck accident case. Trusting an unqualified lawyer left a crash victim with a lifetime of uncompensated losses. Hiring a lawyer can be an uncomfortable and intimidating task in any situation. For most people, it is something that they have never had to do before. The law has its own language, its own customs, its own rules. You don't know what you don't know, so it can be very difficult to find the right lawyer for your case. It can feel even worse when an unexpected tragedy, like a severe truck accident, puts you in the position of having to hire a lawyer for a serious matter as soon as possible. That is the situation that any Clement found herself in. All of the facts I'm about to share come from the public records of a 2022 legal malpractice trial in Polk County, Iowa. In 2015, Ms. Clement was an American success story. She had successfully immigrated to the United States with her family, and she had a well-paying career as a pharmacist. Unfortunately, in October of 2015, Ms. Clement was driving in Johnson County, Iowa, when she was struck from behind by a semi-truck driven at highway speeds. Ms. Clement's car was totaled and she suffered a traumatic brain injury. During her recovery, Ms. Clement recognized that she needed an attorney, but did not know who to call. That is when Ms. Clement made an understandable, but very costly mistake. She remembered that there was a local attorney who she had met at her church. This attorney, Matthew Gilbert, seemed to Miss Clement to be an impressive and kind man. It was easier to call attorney Gilbert than it was to start cold calling attorneys who she didn't know and asking for appointments. So Miss Clement called attorney Gilbert to see if he would help her with her truck accident case. Unfortunately, attorney Gilbert said he would and Ms. Clement hired him. It was unfortunate because attorney Gilbert was not a truck accident lawyer. What happened next was nothing short of a complete disaster. Attorney Gilbert was a real estate and tax lawyer. So he apparently did not realize that he needed to send an immediate evidence preservation letter to the truck driver, the trucking company, and its insurance carrier. Because there is no evidence that this letter was ever sent, the trucking company had no legal obligation to preserve potentially important evidence like GPS data, black box data, driver hours of service records, truck maintenance records, driver cell phone records, and more. This potentially important evidence was then likely legally destroyed by the trucking company six months after Ms. Clement's accident. There is also no evidence that attorney Gilbert took steps to download electronic data from the semi-truck or from Ms. Clement's car. This data could have proved how fast each vehicle was traveling before impact and whether the truck driver made any effort to brake or slow down. It also appears that attorney Gilbert failed to advise Ms. Clement about the importance of documenting her medical condition after the crash. This is particularly important in a traumatic brain injury situation because it is very easy for brain injury symptoms to be missed 
and necessary treatment options to go unexplored. Ms. Clement apparently didn't appreciate that she had the burden of proving what the crash did to her and how it was affecting her life. Now this burden is typically satisfied by consistent medical treatment after a crash by qualified medical providers who are willing to testify about the causal link between the crash and the patient's resulting problems. This was a potentially costly misunderstanding because Ms. Clement's crash-related injuries eventually stopped her from returning her to her job as a pharmacist. It is especially important when a crash-related injury impacts a person's ability to work, that the disabling injury is clearly diagnosed and any resulting disability is solidly documented in the medical records. There is no evidence in the trial record that Attorney Gilbert took the time to speak to Ms. Clement's treating doctors and get the documentation necessary to make a successful settlement demand. To make matters worse, it, it appears that Attorney Gilbert did not understand the legal deadline for filing a lawsuit against the truck driver and his employer. A personal injury lawsuit in Iowa must be filed within two years of the date of the injury. If the lawsuit is filed against an out-of-state defendant, like the trucking company who employed the driver who hit Ms. Clement, a lawsuit must be filed even earlier because it must be both filed and served on the defendant before the two-year deadline. Because attorney Gilbert did not file Ms. Clement's injury lawsuit against the truck driver in time, it was ultimately thrown out of court with no opportunity to refile. Once Ms. Clement lost the opportunity to sue the truck driver, she eventually found another attorney who was willing to sue attorney Gilbert for legal malpractice. Ms. Clement's legal malpractice claim went to trial and an Iowa judge found that Ms. Clement's case against the trucking company had been worth at least $2.7 million. While the judge found in Ms. Clement's favor, she has not been compensated by attorney Gilbert. During her legal malpractice case, Ms. Clement learned that attorney Gilbert did not have a valid legal malpractice insurance policy that could cover this verdict because attorney Gilbert had failed to properly notify his insurance company of the claim. So even though the judge found that Ms. Clement's injury case against the trucking company was worth $2.7 million, she has not received any compensation for the permanent injury she suffered and the loss of her career. Why? Because Ms. Clement trusted an unqualified lawyer with her truck accident case. Now, what can we learn from this sad situation? First, it's usually a mistake to hire an attorney just because you already know them. It is important to do research to make sure a lawyer is qualified to handle your case. In the case of a serious tractor trailer collision, it is worth the time to confirm that an attorney has the training and experience in this specialized area of the law. Second, if your injury case involves death or severe injury, it's important to make sure that any lawyer you hire has sufficient legal malpractice insurance to protect you from any of their mistakes. For example, because most of my cases involve catastrophic semi-crashes, I carry a $5 million legal malpractice insurance policy, so my clients are appropriately protected. Third, there are several important steps that an attorney needs to take to prepare a successful truck accident case. Skipping any of these steps can significantly weaken your case and prevent you from getting a fair settlement for your injuries. Fourth, being a truck accident lawyer means more than just understanding trucking technology and industry standards. Experienced truck accident attorneys understand that it is important to educate clients 
about getting their crash-related injuries appropriately treated and documented. The bottom line is that a truck accident case can be a valuable thing. It should only be entrusted to an attorney who has the training, experience, and track record to successfully get you a fair settlement. If you have any questions about what you should be looking for in a truck accident lawyer, call my firm, RSH Legal, at 1-800-433-0283. It is a free call for anyone who's been injured in a tractor-trailer crash.